Welcome to this week's new coffee, which is Muduku from Uganda. Uganda is not a country that I buy a huge amount of raw coffee from. Um, and the reason being is that I work with a couple of importers in the UK, and those importers will have strengths and weaknesses in various countries around the world. And Uganda is not one of their strengths. There are some people that I uh, will be working with in the future that have a better, deeper understanding of those countries and will be able to offer um, a greater degree of variety to me as a roaster in the UK. But I haven't quite got to that stage yet. Um, I've actually got to introduce a new coffee roaster behind me, the apparatus. And uh, I'm going to use that apparatus as a kicker to explore uh, a broader variety of green uh, for our portfolio going forward. Anyway, back to point. So this is a coffee, um, not only because of its mixed cultivar, um, that I haven't had any experience with before. And I've had to, whilst I've roasted, almost revert back to a default African profile. Um, and what do I mean by that? Well. So each, each roaster, each apparatus has a, a certain potential. It has, imagine a car can get from zero to 60 in a certain uh, time frame based on the, the power of the engine. It's exactly the same with a coffee roaster. So over the decade that I've roasted on our Probat, I understand its latent energy and its power available to, to me as a roaster. Um, so with that, I can then set certain scenarios that work within many situations. Um, it's a sort of a catch-all recipe for a brand new coffee. And it's one that when I'm doing my first production roast or first exploration roast of a new coffee, I will always revert back to. And it's a method that I'm going to apply to roasting on the Loring, the new machine behind me. So I've gone into this roast with... Um, uh, a certain gas input uh, throughout the whole roast in order to, to meet my default roast profile. I then tasted it and then it made iterative changes thereafter. So for our subscribers this week, I needed to make uh, two batches, uh, no, pardon me, three batches of roasted coffee and then there's a batch that I send out for our e-commerce customers and for our, um, uh, the markets that I do as well. Anyway, with the high altitude, 1800 to 2200 meters above sea level, I really wanted to make sure that any of the fruit acid compounds within this uh, sparkle within the cup. So I wanted to roast the coffee under 10 and a half minutes. I wanted a short development time, again, to retain some of these fruity compositions, uh, but make sure that I'm nudging into a realm where I'm going to apply some balance and a reach solubility such that all of my customers can have some degree of enjoyment from it, not just the ones that have great water at home. Anyway, so the sum result was a 10 and a quarter minute rose profile, one minutes, 35 seconds post first crack development time, an end temperature of 205 degrees Celsius, and the results in the cupboard, an absolute delight. So let's have a quick taste. Mm. Right, so. The thing you'll note with this when you brew this, and as I brewed it today as a filter coffee, is a really balanced and wonderful play between citric orange and orange style stone fruit like peach. There's almost a little bit of white flesh in there as well, but it's predominantly in that orange sort of color spectrum. Those two, those two fruits or, or um, prominent fruit flavors are underpinned by a really syrupy caramel texture. Um, it is a syrupy coffee, a coffee that has a lovely length, is a smidge, only a smidge of milk chocolate on the finish, um, but an absolute delight and, and really harmonious as well. Clean and crisp because that's the style of roasting that I like to do, um, but again, reverting back to this balance because it, it, is, it is something that I as a roaster seek to try and achieve and that's balance within the cup. It is a coffee that will suit espresso as much as it does filter coffee, aeropress brewing, stovetop mocha pot, cafetiere, the whole lot. Um, 
you don't get that too often in, in African coffees. Sometimes there will be a strong leaning to, towards a particular method of brewing, but my approach with this has been to try to harmonize the coffee so that any method of brewing will work. Um, or should I say, the coffee will work with any method of brewing. Um, so, to recap, it's a mixed cultivar from a country that I don't buy too often from, which is a great way to explore this, uh, certainly through my company. Expect citric acid, but balanced to display orange, peach, um, bitter white peach, definitely that orange peach characteristic and a lovely syrupy caramel finish. It's a delight, versatile for all methods of brewing. Go give it a go. Cheers.